here in video show i'm danny soleil hope you are doing good we're gonna have a great definitely a little hungover so uh who's the first person here who's gonna pop up first thanks a lot for hopping on if you're here and you're just joining us let me tell you a little bit about how this weekly beer and video review show goes and it's like this we go ahead we try out two delicious beers I go ahead and review them. I'll pour them in a glass so you can see what they look like. I'll tell you how they taste. I'll inspire you to drink alongside with me and throw some comments up here and there. And all in between this, we're going to talk about the videos that come out on my channel, Danny Soleil channel, aka Travel Man Dan. And then sandwiched in between those little bits we're going to do some really fun stuff like talk about some what's new and popular what's happening we're not going to get too political we don't do that here we don't like that kind of talk um and then who do we got tenacious freak we are live yes all right so excited to see you you beat greg you um greg we're starting over so tenacious freak if you are the first one to pop up for five weekly beer and videos shows i will go ahead and take a shot guys i gotta be honest with you i'm dragging today i'm dragging i got hammered yesterday for the fourth of july um if you're american hopefully you had a good time what's up aston how we doing and uh hopefully you're having a good time with um wherever you're at but yeah, that's the show pretty much. We do a segment uh, where we talk about uh, this day in history. We do a, what are you reading? What are you watching? We do a lot of fun stuff. We close it out with the quote of the week. So if you're new to the channel, you're just hopping on, go ahead, hit that sub button right there. Ring the bell. We go live every Sunday at 3 p.m. Show's only going to get bigger. And <laughs> we got Greg Z in the house. Here it is. Yes. All right. Z, man, you got beat out, man. Tenacious freak matter. Horse, if we're back at zero, if you go ahead and you log on first and you say what's up to me first five times in a row, I'll take a big healthy shot in your name. Uh, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Here we go. Guys, I got us. But first, as you can see, I'm wearing uh, this ridiculous American flag hat. And uh, this is one of my characters I'm working on. So hopefully you guys uh, we'll start to see a little bit more of a firecracker john and uh he goes and he sells firecrackers out of the back of his trunk after his work shift and so this is my character um, i work at a factory and i sell fireworks so hopefully uh you'll be able to see a little bit more of them uh, i like to go ahead and stay into the somewhat character and just get the feel of it here on the weekly beer and video review show thank you so much for joining me i appreciate it if you are american happy fourth of july i hope you had a, a good time and if you saw my video uh, i hope you had some hot dogs hamburgers enjoy the time with your family most importantly i hope you didn't blow your balls off because <laughs> you might need them um but uh anyway happy fourth of july uh, tenacious freak i know you'll like this and all my other friends if you guys are here from denmark uh this day last year i was on my f uh, fairy tale flight to copenhagen so denmark you are extremely on the mind today uh yeah it was such a such a bittersweet uh well not not bittersweet it was just such a you know how when you have uh, a couple of countries on your top three Okay, if you don't know my top three are Laos, Scot Laos, Scotland. Okay, definitely want to visit Scotland. We already talked about that and Peru. But before that, it was Denmark for, gosh, maybe 15, 20 years, ever since I was a kid. And a year ago, I went ahead and I flew to Copenhagen. And it was probably one of, if not the best vacation slash travel film, whatever experience that I've ever had. So, uh, looked forward to it for a very long time was able to go there and the people the everything if you know my videos if you ever watch it you know i love denmark and uh one year ago i was landing in copenhagen excuse me but let's go ahead and get started on today's beer today's beer we're staying with america okay this one's gonna be fun this one's gonna be interesting it's a new budweiser beer check this out guys well, i'm talking about the budweiser nitro reserve gold Okay, check this thing out. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I know nitro is popping up everywhere. And what it is, is like, it's a certain type of filtration system. I think a Guinness and Boddington's have always been that way, but you're starting to see it pop up more with beers. It'd been long been used um, for, for coffees. And well, uh, then it hit the Starbucks market and you can go and get a nitro infused coffee, which is like a more, 
having a like filtered cup of coffee but now we have beer and uh this is the budweiser nitro reserve gold um <laughs> well we're gonna get into that greg we're gonna definitely talk about that um but yeah so check this out this is um this is the beer uh the nitro pour tutor okay so on the back they give you uh, directions of how to actually drink this and it basically says flip it three times okay you got to flip the can over three times tip it completely upside down and pour it so I don't know if shit's gonna go south or if it's gonna get really uh, wet in here with beer and I'm gonna spill this all over the bar studio here um, but we have the glass we have the can we're gonna flip it three times I'm gonna crack it and then I'm just gonna turn it over and start pouring so let's see how this thing works all right, I'll put the glass between my legs. And here we go. This is the Budweiser Nitro Reserve Gold. Okay, thank you, Greg. <laughs> All right, here we go. There we go. There's one. All right, I'll flip it to two. And we'll flip it three. We'll go ahead. Thank you, Tenacious Freak. Here it goes. I went and cracked it. And it says just to turn it upside down. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so you can see... The bubbles and carbonation flowing, I, it's it's not like a normal beer. A normal beer would have already overfilled with head. Oh man, that looks good. No wonder. They ain't messing around. Look at that. It kind of looks like a root beer. All right? I don't drink pop anymore, but if I did, I could love a good root beer float. But right away we see that. And wow, just like I said, I flipped it completely upside down after spinning it three times. That is a nitro style beer i think it would have overflowed the glass and we would have had suds everywhere but for something inside the way that this thing is filtered micro filter whatever the hell you want to call it i'm not sure beautiful <laughs> that's right i'm gonna let you know tenacious freak how does sucker taste and hey man i love your country a year ago i was there um hopefully i will return it would been it was a huge dream it was the number one place i wanted to visit in the world for many many years so Cheers, this first sip of Nitro Reserve Gold Budweiser is for Denmark, okay, and all my Danish friends over there, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and give it a whirl, okay, the pour was a, was a interesting procedure. Oh my gosh. Wow, holy cow. Wow, no wonder there's something going on in here, man. All right, probably... The smoothest, creamiest beer I've ever had in my life. I mean, it is like, it's just super creamy, velvety. Uh, there's no uh, backwash to it. There's no weird al taste to it. Although it is a darker kind of amber looking, literally flat water. And it is, wow, I can't, I can't believe it. I came from Budweiser. You know, Budweiser gets... Um, a weird knack around the world as being like a watery beer and here in the United States is more of a, a redneck beer but it's a solid beer you know um, there's nothing wrong with a good bud but this one this one is something else man super smooth super creamy definitely looking forward to drinking a full cup of it and I'll let you know what it tastes like but right away um, not not a bad first sip it is five percent alcohol so it's not super strong it's right about where you want a beer to be to be honest with you <clears throat> because this beer itself is, man, just off that first sip, I can tell I could probably drink a 12-pack of this, no problem. Um, probably in two, three hours. Uh, Bud sucks, but they do have some nice mincers. Hey, everyone, Aquanuts! Yes! All right, welcome, welcome. We have another lady in the house. Aquanuts, so watch your language, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. This is what we're reviewing. We are reviewing today the Nitro Reserve Cold. I know you are Danish, and I was telling everyone before, I was in Denmark this day one year ago. So really pumped. There's a little bit of this day in history only one year ago. But with this this beer is, is phenomenal. i got to be honest with you. First sip, I haven't had anything like this before. Um, one thing that is uh, tough about this beer is on your pocketbook, okay? Now, I'm not rich by any stretch the imagination i don't pretend to be rich um I'm, I'm i'm not a frugal cheapskate but um i definitely want to i get what i want right and, and i don't mean that in a kind of a bullish arrogant way if i want to buy this and it's a little more expensive and i want to try it i will buy it 
Maybe one day I'll get a little bit bigger. Maybe uh, the acting career will, will blossom a little bit more. Or maybe this YouTube thing will get even bigger and, you know, get the show and I'll be able to afford all kinds of cool beers. But look, I'm going to tell you, this six pack of this stuff is not cheap. It's $14 for a six pack. So it's a bit on the pricey side, but right away the first sip, definitely, I'm going to go ahead and say it's worth it. Now, uh, who do we got? Hi, Travel Man. How you doing? It's Baro. We're from India. Yes. Some floods in India. I've been watching and paying attention. I got some friends out there. And of course, you, sir. I hope that you are well. I hope that you are safe um, and doing well. Nice to have you here. So we're going to go ahead and talk about, since we're already mentioned it four or five times about Denmark, is um, all this crazy stuff going on with all these tearing down the statues and replacing uh, you know monuments and things like that and I will be sad to say that uh, one of my favorite uh, monuments because well you know I liked the fairy tale of it all I liked uh, Copenhagen and I went there and made a video was um, I don't know if you guys seen the, the little mermaid in Copenhagen was damaged it was vandalized um, but uh, you know it, it said so a bunch of racist remarks had some uh, stickers all over it and uh, definitely was not cool to see because I've been there and when I was there before you'll see if you want to see I'll throw my video up there somewhere wherever it pops up but um you'll see people going up there and like hopping up on these rocks because you can you can get pretty close to it and then they, they, they take like selfies and shit and you know they basically risk their life and they uh well they kind of um well they break the law in Denmark you're not supposed to go ahead and do it but this one was damaged but um you know, the thing about that statue, if you don't know, it was decapitated many, many years ago. And um, the head was returned. And, you know, so the Danish people are no stranger to this attack on this uh, statue. And hopefully they'll be just as resilient and they'll be able to clean it. And they'll be able to take the stickers off and brush off that uh paint that whoever painted that stuff on but i hate to see this kind of thing right because i know everything's getting crazy it's getting really you know really hectic here in the united states for the last i don't know two months or so more than once yeah i i'm imagine i remember was it the 80s where like uh they they stole the whole thing or they did something to it or they i think they no they threw red paint all over it right and uh something for communist fascist look I'm not going. I'm going to take the high road on these kinds of things, because I, I'm not well enough educated on both sides. So you know, being a very uh, perspective personality, I try to look at each and every situation from all different angles. So for me to go ahead and, and stand ground and say, you know, that's you know, this is what it. Is, all I want to say is this is what it is, right? So you guys are familiar with that. That kind of sucks. You know, like I said, people are getting really crazy here. Um, I don't know if you guys saw in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, the guy and his wife that uh, came out with a rifle and uh, the woman had a pistol. It was literally, I felt like I was watching something on like, uh, like a Netflix movie. You know, the guy's in his khakis and he's got his AR-15 and he's pointing at a bunch of protesters and the woman's got the gun and like, I'm sure she's probably shot it before, but it's just a crazy hectic scene because... What had happened is they bought this old historical home in St. Louis, and then these protesters just barged in through the gate, and they were, you know, who knows what could happen. I mean, you get an angry mob of people, and I'm not saying this protesting group was angry mobbed, but you just never know. These things could turn on an instant. Uh, for the last two months, we've been watching people breaking through stores, whipping rocks through, you know, the businesses, just burning stuff, looting. So um, I don't know if you saw that in St. Louis. I saw it. Another woman pulled a, a, a gun on another woman and her family at Chipotle. Chipotle is like a fast food uh, Texas American. I don't know what you'd call it. It ain't Mexican food, but uh, you know, like bowls and wraps and tacos and things. But uh, yeah, it's just cr really crazy. And, and you hate to see this kind of thing, especially uh, something like the mermaid statue or these statues that are here to commemorate parts of a history that, yes, I agree that... Um, you know, if you are horrific and these things were happening back then, we do not need to celebrate them. Um, we need to stay educated. But, uh, you know, like I said, there's a proper way to do that. And we already discussed that, so we're not going to get into it. I just hate to see something like uh, everything gets very uh, political 
and very like, oh, it's either this way or that way, and I was racist, and you're a racist, and all this kinds of stuff. They broke the gate in a self place that broke the, yeah, exactly. They trespassed, right? So that's not, that's not, you can't do that. And they're lucky they didn't get shot. So, um, you know, where are we going with this, guys? I don't know. But let's, uh, let's, let's kind of veer off of this. This is not what this show is about, but it's just, it, it lays heavy. Um, it's, it's, um, it's sad to see. You know, it's really sad to see. I mean, what's next? What can you say and do without somebody being uh, offended or upset about it or righteous or pulling back uh, the, the curtain from 400? Check out the history of the gold. Oh, Viking age melted down. Okay, I, I will definitely check that out, Tasia's Freak. Yeah, I'll definitely look at that, man. I like that kind of stuff. But, um, but anyway, yeah, so if you're watching this and um, you're out there terrorizing statues and, and painting uh, over monuments and things like that, I guess, you know, I'm not going to tell you to stop or whatever because you ain't going to listen to me. You know, obviously, if you're doing this kind of shit, you're not level-headed. But I would want to know, like, why? Like, what does it make you feel like when you do this? Because it doesn't erase the actual fact that history had happened. But what does it make you feel like? Um, and that's it. That's all I'm going to say. From uh, That was some pretty heavy stuff. We're going to go back into this beer because, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to wash that taste out of my mouth. <laughs> all right, here we go. Let's go ahead and try. This is the Budweiser Nitro Reserve Gold Edition. Oh, my gosh. It's got a bit of a sweetness to it. There's no, absolutely no bitterness to it. It's got a bit of a, well, a thin kind of body, right? It's, 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 it's kind of watery, but it's smooth and velvety. And it definitely is a really, really nice taste, okay? You're getting a nice taste of an owl going on right there. And I can't, I can't be more happier for Budweiser because this is delicious. I'm not sure I'll go ahead and, and, and drink it all the time, but a good six-pack here and there. It's like a treat, right? Like like a, like a nice, fine treat. All right, so we were talking about COVID. Hopefully everyone's okay. Hope you guys are all safe from COVID. Um, we had some reopenings here in the United States, and now in California, they're going ahead and they're shutting things back down. I know the beaches were shut down. They don't want mass gatherings at the beaches. Probably a smart thing. I don't know. I'm not Dr. Fauci. I'm not a health professional. I don't really know. I just know that these, all I keep seeing is numbers spiking and people getting angry over it. But, you know, best um, best case scenario that is that they find a vaccination because that's the only thing that's getting us out of this thing. And who knows? You know, maybe it's a thing where it, it, it spurs every year, kind of like the flu. And we have COVID-21 or COVID-20. And, you know, each year we get more and more uh, advanced with this terrible virus but uh, hope you're all safe hope that everything goes back to normal soon I miss traveling so much oh I just want to get out there and, and, and go and see new things and I want to go ahead and take a plane ride and I want to go land and go check into a hotel and you know that feeling where you like you first drop all your shit off what do we got here? Amongst the most famous finds, Danish prehistory and the Golden Homes, they're not only unique, they also have the Golden Horns that were made. I'm doing good, sir. Good, Barrow. I'm glad. Today's just freak. I'm going to check that out. But do you know that feeling like when you land in that country, that new country, you take whether it's a train, a friend picks you up, um, you, 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 you somehow get to that hotel or that place, you drop your shit off in the room, maybe take a quick shower, definitely brush your teeth. And then you step back out onto the street and you're like, wow, this is so, it's new. And it's, it's just such an exciting, exhilarating feeling. And man, I miss that so much about traveling. I hope you do. If you want, go ahead and put down in the comments below your favorite thing about traveling. What do you like the most about it? What do you miss the most about it? And it doesn't have to be, um, a, you know, worldwide travel to, you know, Bangladesh or, you know, some parts of Zimbabwe. It could be something where it's like inside your country, you know, I know. I would love to go to Florida or I would love to go up into Montana or Wyoming. Um, that's all new for me, all those great mountains and cool countryside. So hopefully we'll go ahead and we'll get a grip on that. Now sports-wise, one thing that I'm super, super excited about, and um, speaking of COVID, 
I really feel bad because I really like this guy, but UFC 251, the Fight Island. I don't know if you follow it, but it's going to be happening this Saturday at, at YAS, just outside of Abu Dhabi. And um, it's a small little island that's, you know, basically only for the UFC international fighters because the problem was is they were able to do them at the apex and they were doing some down in jacksonville but they couldn't get the international fighters to fly into america because of the covid restrictions so now what they're doing is they're flying fighters to yaz fight island then they'll be uh, safe and ready to go to fight on the island then they'll be quarantined if they have to return back into their their home state or country home country i guess it would be so really excited about it the main card the fight was uh, uh, the champion at 170. His name is Kamara Usman, and a brilliant fighter, a really good guy. And then he is fighting uh, a guy named Gilbert. That's his Brazilian nickname, or I think that's his middle name. But they were teammates, Raul, and the Kamara Usman fight because these two don't like each other. They really have some bad blood. Anyway, sadly enough, Gilbert Burns, uh, three of his, three people in his camp, him and two other people, got COVID, so they were unable to make that flight. So the UFC is going to book the Jorge Masvidal fight against Kamara Usman. So that is really exciting. If you're a UFC fan, you're probably pumped. I was pumped up to watch it before, but it's going to be awesome because we have also on that card uh, Max Holloway is going to be fighting Alexander Vol uh, Vol Alex. Volnowski again. Um, we got Jose Aldo is fighting uh, Peter Yan. It's just going to be a great, awesome card. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think this is who he's fighting. I, but I'm just really excited, really pumped up. Um, looking forward to the UFC 251 Yaz Fight Island. I'm really excited about that one. And uh, now it comes to the part of the show that I want to go ahead and it's going to get a little, a little sad for me. So. Um, you know, I hope that uh, you understand that I'm, I'm doing this show and I'm sharing my personal life with you guys because, well, I just want to go ahead and commemorate this person. Unfortunately, over the weekend of last week, a very good friend of mine, Mad Mike, uh, his, was his name, Mike Bauer. He was my right-hand man when I ran a nightclub in Hollywood for, I think, eight years. Uh, hung out every day in the morning, hung out every day at night at work. Just a really good dude um, has passed away, sadly. It wasn't because of COVID. Unfortunately, Mike was, uh, was a party animal. Uh, he drank a lot. He really decent blue-collar kind of guy, but, uh, you know, he just had a really legitimate drinking problem. And uh, about a year ago, his liver failed on him, and he went into, like, a shock where he had sept septus, where your liver explodes almost. Thank you, Tenacious Freak. He was a, he was a great guy, man. I really liked him. And uh, unfortunately, he was living on the street at the time in Hollywood, and it's very common here in Los Angeles. I think we have over 70,000 street people. But uh, Mad Mike then was able to get subsidized, had to quit drinking, almost got a liver transplant, but instead they did dialysis, you know, and all this crazy stuff where he had to get, he, he basically got drained every week. Poor Mad Mike, man. And um, what had happened is because of COVID and everything, he lost the care that he was getting and um, something happened where he wasn't able to get drained and I'm still figuring it out. So I don't want to like talk too much about it, but I just wanted to say, if you have your friends with you or you have your friends nearby, I know it's tough right now. You're unable to see them. Um, do everything that you can to video call them, Zoom call them, use the house party app. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that you're thinking of them because you just really never know. And I know you hear that all the time. It's very cliche. But uh, for me, when I found out Mad Mike passed away, it broke my heart, man. It broke my heart because he was so close to me and we had so many good times, had so many fun nights at the nightclub working, uh, always looked out for each other. And, you know, he'd been in and out of prison, but still a really good guy. Every time he came out, I was happy to see him. And uh, we'd always have a beer. So, uh, Mad Mike, wherever you are, wherever you're decided to hover in heaven, I hope you're looking down and, and know that we miss you, uh, me and my friends. And, uh, well, I know you. your last days you couldn't really drink. So I'm going to go ahead and salute. And this one here is for Mad Mike. I miss you, buddy. I love you. And I hope you're doing up in heaven just as much fun as you were doing down here. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to one day seeing you again. Mad Mike, rest in peace. Oh.
oh man it's got it's got a bit of an amber reddish kind of taste almost like well well almost like a dark owl would be from england okay it's got a crisp and fresh feeling to it uh really nice definitely suggest if you get a chance to try that out i'm gonna go ahead and set that sucker down and i'm gonna talk about last week's video on my channel and that was a food friday video and if you are not used to these food friday videos they're getting wackier and crazier and nutser by the day <laughs> and i'm loving it you know due to the covid and stuff we can't go into restaurants like like i wanted to you know i can't bring all my gear with me set it up you know film it properly so we've been doing the american fast food runs and they're cool because well people from india or people from denmark or people from uh, peru that don't see these things don't see all the different creations in different places that we have and shit even in america there's different ones on the west coast and there are up north and down south um just really cool to go ahead and showcase all the cool different fast food restaurants now i don't eat it all the time i eat it maybe twice a month three times a month <laughs> um yeah what if, something struck you funny huh <laughs> Uh, well, Greg Z, I'm glad I can make you laugh, my man. I'm glad I can make you laugh. Um, but yeah, so so the really fun thing is, um, well, going to these places. What's the matter, Greg Z? <laughs> going to these places and finding out their secret menu items. Okay. Oh, I know. That's a perfect example. Okay, so we have Tenacious Freak. Thank you so much for popping in so many times. He lives in Denmark, and he's never seen a drive through like Sonic. So this past video, I went to Sonic Drive-In. Now, Sonic is not really popular all over. There's only a few um, in Los Angeles that I know of. So I had to drive out more into the desert. But it's really cool because it's like an old-school, old-fashioned, 1950s drive-up where you drive in, and you can park. Now, they have a drive through okay where you can drive through like a regular window <laughs> but but this is a drive in where you park and you press the button and it comes in and, and you know they, they tell you what you want and well greg z had mentioned to me last week that sonic still brings out your food on roller skates just like they did back in the day well this one they didn't bring out roller skates but they brought out my food and so on this video you're gonna see i was able to find something on their secret menu called <laughs> thank you greg i appreciate it thank you uh called the extreme tots and it was this extreme tater tots with this cream sauce on it nacho cheese uh mushrooms fried onions and just jalapenos and it was just a it's just a beautiful thing right just a beautiful tater tot dish but then the steel of the show the steel of the show that's cool greg i want to go there one day the steel of the show was my creation or it's called the American Italian Cockadoodle Do Foot Long Wiener. Order the board thing. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just sit there and eat. Yeah, you just pull in the drive thing. You just sit there and eat. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool because you know there's these two clowns that do. The, they've been doing commercials for Sonic for almost 20 years. Probably made millions of dollars on it. And they just sit in that little thing and they talk and. You guys, if you're American, you know the Sonic commercials I'm talking about. But but the really cool thing about the American Italian cockadoodle do foot long wiener was my secret creation. And why I call it that is because it's a hot dog, right? With chili and cheese on it. Very, very American style foot long hot dog. But then I went ahead and added in mozzarella sticks, okay? Hence the Italian. Now you have American Italian. Why do we call it cockadoodle do? Because I put little popcorn chickens on the other side. Now this thing's getting crazy. Now it's getting bananas. The thing is huge. You got to check it out. It's already on my channel last week. If you if you haven't seen it already, check it out. I'll go ahead and throw it up there right now. But then I drizzled barbecue sauce all over it and each bite was an explosion of flavor. Really delicious. Yes, is it over top? absolutely yes is it a little extreme why not sure but who the hell cares it's a lot of fun it's um it's a way that you get to see uh well a person going through a drive-through and adding on to make that video a little bit more interesting and if you haven't checked it out uh check it out let me know what you think down in the comments below let's finish off this beer and then i want to get into the second beer and talk about a few other things so 
this is it. This is the last of what we're doing. This is what we've been drinking. If you're new and you just hopped on, ever eaten burger with a fork and knife? Never. No way, Jose. Now, I've eaten pizza with a knife and fork, and I know you're not supposed to do that, especially I'm from western New York, where you might get laughed at. But sometimes, if you're in Chicago, you have to, because the sucker's like a huge pie. And, um, well, sometimes if you get overload of toppings, or if it's too hot, you'll usually use a fork just to get that little tip going. And then um, then I start snacking about halfway into the pizza with my hands. But uh, But a typical... New York slice of pizza is that big flappy thing, right? You know, that big giant thing. You do the fold over, and then it's like two two thin pieces of pizza on top of each other. Um, you've definitely got to eat that with your hands. I've never actually probably eaten any New York-style pizza with a fork. But the Chicago-style, certain things of Buffalo, yeah. Uh, but never, ever a hamburger. Um, but here we go. So this is what we're drinking, the Budweiser Nitro Gold Reserve. It is absolutely delicious. I'm going to go ahead and take down this last sip. Oh, man. That is good. Really good. Really good. I love the, the freshness of it. It's crisp. But the, the main thing that I really like about this one it's just how creamy and smooth and velvety it's like it's almost like like when i first poured it and i was drinking i say oh it looks like a root beer feels like you're drinking like a root beer beer <laughs> that makes any sense at all i don't know but uh really nice taste uh budweiser is getting on to hip to the game budweiser makes uh you know your typical i don't know weekend pilsner kind of beer that's what they're most famous for i know they have a couple of other commemorative beers out there like the veterans red amber beer and uh well now we have this nitro and i'm going to tell you guys i don't give out a lot of these i'm going to go ahead and give it a really good score a high score um one that's going to make you motivated that if you can get one of these you can try it and tell me what you think if you do but i'm going to give this one here this budweiser Nitro Reserve Gold Edition, a 9.5. Ho, 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 ho. That's like two in two weeks, I think. Really delicious. Uh, I'm not backing down from the score. Really like it. Uh, it's from the Anheuser-Busch Brewing Company. We're all familiar with them. But really just a solid beer. Um, sometimes when you get a little, uh, I don't know how you say it, a little crafty a little niche a little too experimentally uh the beer can go really bad but in this case budweiser you did an excellent job um really really enjoy it i still got a few more back in the fridge and looking forward to sucking them back down as i'm putting in the metadata after the show's over you guys don't really see that but i go ahead and do all the data and uh well then i drink the other beer so usually in about two three hours from now i'm crushed but um, can't really drink too much today because of yesterday's debauchery. And that's why I'll go ahead and bring this up. Who do we got here? Hey, Danny, nice hat. And it'd be Independence Day, brother. Yes, another Buffalonian. Good to see you here. Thank you so much for hopping on. Appreciate it. Um, this is uh, Firecracker John. If that was the smoothest beer you've ever had, what would it take for a beer to hit 10? Ooh, okay. That's a good question. We've only had one 10. And... I gotta be honest with you, I don't know if it's the taste or if it's nostalgia or if it's I'm a, I'm a hometown homer, as they say, but we had one beer hit a 10, and that was Labatt's Blue. I know Bubba knows what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not sure if any of my family is here, but uh, Labatt's Blue is what I grew up drinking, and Buffalo, New York is on the border of Niagara Falls, Ontario, so we get a lot of Canadian beer influence. And uh, we had another 9.5 from Canada, Molson. But the only 10, perfect 10 we've had was that Labatt's Blue. And like I said, you might give it like a 7. But for me personally, it's, probably, it's the first beer. Well, the first beer I think I started was all Milwaukee. <laughs> See, Bubba, that's a Buffalo guy right there. He's drinking a blue light. I'll probably dip more into the regular blues later in the evening as he really wants to turn it up not super strong only like a 5.3 or something like that but um just it brings back that taste i probably drank more of those beers <laughs> baba i drank more um labats so i think that's probably what took me to the 10 
was more of a nostalgic factor. But anyway, whatever. Nonetheless, uh, taking it pretty easy today because of yesterday. Now, I, I got to point out, I'm not at that point yet where I'm getting a, a, spon I'm getting a few sponsors here and there, uh, but I'm not promoting products. None of these beers are for me to make money with this company. And same thing when I'm about to show you. I just want to go ahead and show you to share it with you on the show. So check this out. Have you guys tried this one? It's made in Florida. It's called Monkey in Paradise Vodka. I drank quite a bit of it just myself. So about three quarters of the bottle. That's why I'm feeling it. And I don't really get into the hard booze as much anymore. I definitely like me a gin martini. Um, so if, if we're going out, you know, especially if if I'm with a, a woman or whatever, I'll usually drink gin martinis, um, you know, but uh, this particular one, Monkey in Paradise, it's rated the number one most popular vodka and one, you know, in San Francisco, there's a vodka uh, a contest, there's a vodka contest in New York. And once again, this one is the one that won Monkey in Paradise. It's pretty good, handcrafted in Florida. It's distilled seven times. It's sugar-free, gluten-free, carb-free. Okay, so it's free of all that stuff. It's about $18.99, so with tax, about 22 bucks. I don't know, something like that. Delicious. you got to try it out if you get a chance. If you're a vodka drinker, um, I was drinking it last night with cranberry juice. You know, whatever. I like it. Old school drink. I won't drink uh, rum and cokes, but I like a vodka cran. Uh, definitely very, very good monkey in paradise. Good vodka. Um, all right, now, let's move on to... The next beer we are going to try is from a brewery that we've had several beers here on this show. It's down in San Diego. I cannot wait to go. Um, vodka with soda, good call right there. Definitely. That, you know, I don't know how it is in, um, in Denmark, but that's all the rage right now. That is usually um, how I like to drink uh, if I'm going to be out in the hot sun. But a lot of people are drinking those uh, White Claws and things like that. We should go ahead and do a beer review on those, like White Claw and Truly and the seltzer drinks. But now we're talking about a brewery that we've done here before. We've had a delicious beer. I think it scored about an 8.5 before. It's called the, uh, the Sculpton IPA. It's got that queer, weird, uh, like crazy little fish on the front. Um, but we're talking about Ballast Point. Check it out, guys. We are going to be drinking the Ballast Point Lager. Now, this is the, the uh, well, we call it a 22, but it's actually 3.2 fluid ounces. Um, so it's a little bit bigger of a can. It's a 4.2% alcohol. I just really like it. I want to go ahead and keep it very America this weekend. I want to go ahead and support, uh, <clears throat> well, it's not local in terms of Los Angeles, but it's local in terms of California and Southern California. So we did the Budweiser. Now I want to try this one. It's um, It's got a great little can, so, you know, huge little can top, so we don't need the the bottle opener that we normally drink you gotta like that when the suds go flying all right it's time for a new pour and this is the ballast point dedicated to the craft lager and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try it out it's probably gonna have to pour a little bit um twice into the cup but you can see the difference okay take a look as i'm pouring this thing compared to the nitro if i was to completely flip this sometimes you just like sick <laughs> Greg, I have no idea what that means, buddy, but we need you here. We definitely don't want to be killing anybody, um, but check it out, okay? This one is much, much lighter, okay? So light, you know, that, that's it's crazy, right? I can see you. Somebody throw me up a comment. I can probably read it through the glass. Anybody? Okay, oh, I see somebody's comments and so far away. Okay, I couldn't read it since it's light, okay? Absolutely. Compared to that gold, look at you can still see you can see the mustache going through it. Super light. One of the things that they go ahead and um, they promote right on the can is it's only 99 calories. All right. So if you're looking to get trim, if you want that eight pack to come out, you might want to try this longer. But it is for 999 calories is only a 12 ounce can so it's about half of this so let's go ahead and try it like i said um sometimes you like a good crisp fresh carbonated beer and that's it i mean it's super light it's it's literally like sorry ladies if i was to whiz in a cup after a little bit of drinking it literally looks like pee all right and that's how light it is but um well no i really don't really feel like drinking pee, but uh, yeah, here we go. Let's go ahead and try it out. 
Ooh. Wow. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Super light. Okay. Ooh, man. It's really, really crispy. Okay. And what I mean by that is as you take your sip and you're drinking through it, you can feel how crisp and how it's not like a hoppy crisp. It's like it's got some kind of like bite to it, almost like um like a kombucha, like a sourness to it. But uh, it's definitely got a really refreshing flavor all the way through it. Um, it's um uh, it's not too herbal. I would characterize it more of a zippy flavor. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's not bad. Uh, in terms of fragrance, you don't really smell too much floral. Uh, getting a, a slight hoppy smell to it. Okay, all right, not bad. Uh, it's okay. All right, the first sip is okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you because I like Ballast Point. You can have a bad beer at a brewery, right? I mean, that's you can, you know, love a place and uh, yeah, it looks like cider. That's pretty much that's better than talking about it as pee, right? <laughs> the nature's freak. I hope one day we get together and chug some beers, man. Um, but okay, well, let's see. Now, let's let's talk about the videos that are coming out this next week. And I'm really excited. This video's been out. It's been doing well. It's been out for a little bit over a year. But it is um, a micro video. As you know, Micro Mondays are just a shorter, condensed video of what I did uh, before. Like, now we're about a year and a half into it. So we're a little... We're about a year and a half behind. So the video is of that... But just shorter. It's a four minute video, Micro Mondays, hence the name. And it is called Rub My Feet. It is my experience when I was in China at a Chinese foot massage. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. I know it sounds disgusting. But let me tell you guys something. One of the great things, one of the things I miss the most about living in China is the massage treatments, the Chinese foot massage. It was like five bucks, man. And you go and they do all the kind of reflexology on your feet after they've been so... First they put it... Uh, the Monday, the Michael Monday, it was like 15... This Monday, the Michael... Really? Oh, that's not good. I, I, I... It shouldn't have been... It should have been more than 15 seconds. The pastrami video? I gotta go... You know, you know let me know if... Uh, if something something happened because the pastrami video I put out was uh, you know about five six minutes so let me know if um, if that one changed but yeah 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 the pastrami if you want to watch the full pastrami video it's down in the in the description but that pastrami video should be longer than 15 seconds this one I, I'm putting out is four minutes and you're gonna love it it's 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 me and a Chinese. It was longer from what I remember. Me, love you, long time. I'll check it out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The, let, me, where, let me back up. Okay. So, if you go to these Chinese foot massage parlors and, you know, you exercise and you run and just if you're a regular um, dude and you just want to get your feet or a lady and just, it's such a, you see, the thing is, it's like all your nerve endings, they got to end somewhere, right? All these nerves and this complex human body that we have and everything they're all connected by neural pathways and all kinds of stuff but where do they stop right they stop at your hands and your feet hence reflexology and the chinese do it in such a way where you're like you go in you're gonna see in the video i sit down on this little thing it gives me a little neck massage it rubs my back a little <laughs> you know he's a really funny looking kid man it's a really nice kid and, um, and then while your feet are soaking in like Chinese herbs, then they put you, they turn you around and they rub on the spot. So like, say this was my foot. The video is fine. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, that's the micros. That's the micros. Um, no problem, freak, no problem. That's the micros. I keep them shorter um, because I just want to, I want to go ahead and just, just blast YouTube with as much content of Travel Man Dan as I humanly can. But um, say this is your foot and the nerve endings or whatever. And this one might be the stomach. And this one might be your gallbladder. And over here might be for your eye circulation. Whatever it is, um, you're going to see them rubbing my feet and doing it in a certain way and everything. And it's freaking amazing. I miss it so much. But here's the cool thing about the video. And this is really important for me because years ago, this would have been back in 2004. 
2012, 2013, when I moved to China, I wanted to go ahead and do travel vlogging. YouTube was just blowing up. I didn't really know too much about it. I had a terrible camera. I had no microphone because it was the, the, the sound that was coming out of this like old camcorder thing. Mm, sometimes behind, so I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, check it out. But it, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to film anything. I didn't know how to edit anything. But what's really important to me um, for this is what's up, dude? How are we doing, Carlos? Yes. All right. Good to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. We got somebody new in the house. What up? All right. So yeah, it's pretty um, it's pretty exciting to see and to go back, especially a year and seven months later, and to watch you know when I first started. And this one was way before. I literally like wasn't doing the whole bam. You know, I wasn't and it wasn't Travel Man Dan yet. I was just Danny Soleil. Your old videos are not. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. You know, I started um, doing it with a little bit more of like, so so that video that you're going to see, the micro was done 2012, 13, somewhere in there. And then I shelved it. I didn't do anything. I only started Travel Man Dan in 2018, like late 2018, something like that. Uh, um, 2019. I, I forgot. I got to go back and look. But that was the very first one that I kind of experimented with. Um, didn't know how to edit, didn't know how to do anything. I just knew I wanted to be a travel show host. It's always been a big dream of mine. It still is. Even as an actor, I continue to go and strive for uh, being a host and being a travel show. Um, I love people. I love, you know, countries. I love culture, customs. I love this stuff. And, um, you know, I just really enjoyed it. So you'll go ahead and you can check it out. It comes out tomorrow. It'll be out tomorrow, uh, Monday morning. Uh, you can check that out. And that is at the Chinese Massage Parlor. And, and you're going to see, like, the evolution of me, which was really cool. It's the coolest thing. Last time they were doing that to me, massage me, I was farting all over the place. <laughs> Greg, I wouldn't expect it. Um, if you're not a... Yeah, thank you, Tenacious Freak. Thank you so much. Dude, I freaking love you, man. You, you know, that's the nicest thing. That's what, you know, my closest friend says, Danny, look, dude, you've already done huge movies. You've already been in movies all the time, and you already have your travel show, okay? It's just a matter of, you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it will. I promise you I'm going to continue to do it. As soon as this COVID shit ends, I got savings. I'm going to go and travel. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to make killer videos of all kinds of cool places, people, things, all kinds of fun stuff. So thank you, Tenacious uh, Freak. Thank you, everyone, for the support. I don't think I could thank you uh, truly enough, which then brings me to this next point. Uh, I've seen this thing, uh, you know, it's called Cameo, right? Let me get a drink. Let's go back to this one. If you're just hopping on, Carlos, I know you just hopped on here. This is what we're drinking. We're drinking the Ballast Point Lager. It's got a crispy zip to it. Um, it's okay. It's super light. Um, kind of really light on my end. But we're going to go ahead and see if, it, uh, if the second sip is better than the first. And it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm not going to... Yeah, I, I don't know what to think of it. Maybe I'll, I'll pour the rest in and we'll, we'll get... We don't fully give a score until all the beer is gone. Okay, so bear with me. Um, it's just... I was like, no, no, no. I was, it's, it's just... It's got a weird taste to it. It's just got a funk to it. I don't know what it is. It's got like a little bit of... Um, almost like a cider kind of taste to it. And maybe that's what you were talking about because it looks like cider. But hey, this is what I want to tell you guys. Thank you so much for appreciate, and I, I thank, let me start though. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. You're right. I do have a travel show. I'm continuing to grow, and um, I will not forget those of you guys that are with me now as I continue to blow up. I'm going to be doing giveaways, and I, you wouldn't believe. I, I literally have a pad of paper that I write down, and I know who I'm going to give away stuff to. So, um, so. Be, be expecting that but one thing that I do want to say is I saw this thing it's called cameo right and it's like superstars and shit like that and celebrities and stuff and you can pay like hundreds of sometimes thousands of dollars for them to, to give you a personalized message <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself well that's a cool idea I really like your channel very informative with some hunger throw in as well and <laughs> keep it going thanks Baba appreciate it man Thank you so much. Better late than yes. 
Yes, Van der Studel, you are here. You made it live. Thank you so much. That was in Poland. I hope to get to Poland soon. Okay, so as you can see, I'm sweating my butt off here in the studio. We can't run the air conditioner when the studio when we are filming because it's like that noise. And I had to learn that too. I was so embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, usually farting and getting a massage is definitely quite embarrassing. One time I was at a chiropractor and he adjusted my back and I got out a little <laughs> We all had a good laugh. But um but I know I know how you feel, Greg. But hey, back to what I was saying is cameo. So these 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 people are literally charging like hundreds of dollars for personalized messages. And what I wanna say is I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this. If you have a birthday coming up and you would like a personalized birthday message from Travel Man Dan, um, you know, please <laughs> Please just call me, I mean, uh, DM me on Instagram, okay? I, you don't have to go to Cameo. I'm not on Cameo. Shoot me a DM. My, um, it's, that is farting heavy. <laughs> it's just funny. Farting is just funny. All right. Um, you don't have to um, pay me anything or whatever. But if you want a personalized birthday message, a good luck message, Go to my Instagram, DM me, and I will return you a message within 48 hours wishing you a happy birthday, wishing a friend of yours a happy birthday, whatever, for free. You don't have to pay me anything. It's, it's an honor for me because I know that you guys are out there supporting me, spending your time, uh, investing your, your time to watch me, to enjoy it. So if you ever want a personalized message from Travel Man Dan, just send, send me a message. Say, hey, it's my birthday, dude. Can you send me one? I'll send you one. Tell me if you want a <laughs> serious character-wise funny just straight normal i got you bro i got you uh ladies whatever uh you know and, and i'm not going to charge anything i think that's so cool and i think because we have the opportunity with technology to do these kinds of things we should and i think that's kind of cool you know like if i was growing up and i could contact some of the artists that i looked up to um as an actor even now and they send me a you know happy birthday travel man dan or danny soleil i'll be so excited sylvester stallone my step, dude, his stepdaughter is good at yoga. He sent me some yoga videos, man. Um, so, uh, anyway, yeah, if you're interested, I just thought I'd put that out there. I'm going to continue to grow. Tenacious Freak, thank you, bro. Thank you, Baba, for recognizing me and telling me I have a travel show. It means so much. Um, bro hugs, daps, all that kind of good stuff. And now let's move on to the next thing. All right, and that is a little segment that I'm throwing in here, and it's called What Would You Rather? All right, this is going to be fun. I'm working on a new show, a new, uh, new segment for the show, okay? And... Um, it's called What Would You Rather? It's five quick questions. What would you rather? You can put it down in the comments. What I would suggest is, you know, go back and listen to this. Wait till the playback is over and then put it in the comments. Okay, wait till this, you know, is completely over and then get, list them. One, two, three, four, five. Give me your five and I'll respond back to them. Because if you comment now, it pops up. And I'm going to do a slight uh, rapid fire so I won't be able to respond to you. So wait till this video is over and then go ahead in the comment section and give me your answer to what these five what would you rathers are. And here they are. Ba -ba 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 See, you're getting a lot of people doing live. Max Packs, thank you. You know, we're growing, bud. We are growing. Thank you so much for noticing it. I got some great friends in Europe. I have some friends over in Florida. I have some friends in Western New York that pop on. We're growing, man. You know, little by little, you just keep showing up and we'll see what happens. But here is the new segment. It's called What Would You Rather? Wait till this video is over and put it down in the comments. What would you rather? Would you rather... Um, <laughs> would you rather live at the beach or in the forest? Okay, quick, boom. All right, mine's forest. All right, so next one. Would you rather vacation in Italy or France? Okay, mine, Italy. Okay, the next one. <laughs> would you rather eat Indian food or... Thai food. Ooh, that's a good one, right? Huh? Oh, man. <sighs> Indian food. Ooh, speaking of farting. But, uh, hey, Thai food I eat all the time. I'm actually going to have to go with Indian food on that one. 
I love Thai food and I love Indian food, but but Indian food when it's done right and it's just perfect and it's just amazing. Oh man, I, I'm really looking forward to going over to India and eating it. All right, here comes number four. Number four. All right, this is to freak you out a little bit. <sighs> yeah, lots of tons of Thai here in uh, in Los Angeles. Thai town. I used to live there. I lived in Thai town for three years in Hollywood. All right, here we go. Remember, leave them in the comments after the video. What would you rather? 818. What would you rather? <laughs> would you rather be stuck on a Ferris wheel way up in the, no, where it's almost like you're, you're lean back, right? You're at that weird position where it's just stuck, right? You're on that big Ferris wheel in London and you're in that one cage and it's swinging and you know, you're out there and you're getting a little crazy for 30 minutes or be stuck in a really tight, narrow cave for 30 minutes. <sighs> so you're either afraid of claustrophobia or you're afraid of heights. I don't know. Um, for me personally, I'm going, I've been stuck in a cave and it's not fun, <laughs> Carlos. I've been stuck in a cave in Vietnam and it's scary as hell. But I'm going to go Ferris wheel. I think I can get through that one once once the you know initial settling down. And neither, Craig. <laughs> okay, and here's the last one. So we did we did some cool, you know, what would you rather, where would you rather live? We did some fun, uh, where would you rather vacation? We did some rather, where would you rather eat? What kind of tra traumatic experience would you rather get through? Now we're going to do something a little disgusting and gross. Not going to get too crazy. We're not going to talk sexual or whatever. <laughs> but, um, all right. So... <laughs> this is gross, but we're going to do it anyway. What would you rather eat? Okay. It's a, it's a tennis ball. Okay. He <laughs> wonders through it all. <laughs> it's a tennis ball size of boogers. Like just a ball of boogers all rolled up and you have to eat it. Um, or earwax. <laughs> Yuck. Okay. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't know. Everybody probably picked their nose at one point, and when you were a child, you probably ate your boogers. But I'm talking like a ball of boogers, <laughs> and um, or a ball of earwax. And for Travel Man Dan, I'm probably going to have to go with earwax. Oh, I can't believe it. All right, so I'll try to keep it a little gross. I'll keep it a little interesting. And um, each and every video, we'll try to do a what would you rather. Put it down in the comments after the video. And now, let's roll on to the next video. <laughs> Save that one for reading. And then, that's right, for the kids. Well, that's what we're going to talk about next. The next video is going to be Reading Man Dan. I'm going to make it quick, short, and sweet, and simple, and all that good stuff. It's going to be a fun episode. I read a Dr. Seuss book called There's a Wocket in My Pocket. And what's really fun about uh, this one is this was given to me by um, Early Moments, which is a book company, a publishing book company. After they seen my first Travel Man Dan, Reading Man Dan, uh, Dr. Seuss, they contacted me. They called me. They said, hey, would you be interested in doing some more videos with our books? We'll send you a whole bunch. They sent me a dozen. I think we went over it on the show before. They sent me a dozen Dr. Seuss books, and now we're in a collaboration where you can go ahead and purchase them. Um, don't make a lot of money off it, whatever. If, if I make no money, I don't care. I'm still going to do these videos. It's a really fun. There's a locket in my pocket. It's one of the earlier Dr. Seuss books. That's going to be this week. Reading Man Dan eventually is going to slide over to like a Tuesday um, for kids. Because then we're going to start doing Travel Man Dan again in, in the nuts and bolts, the core of the channel. Let's start this day in history, Barrow. <laughs> He's getting me going. Okay, Barrow. On that note, buddy, I'm going to have a sip in your name, Barrow DePaul, and uh, we'll get into this day in history. Ah. Ah. It's such a, such a weird taste. It's not like grapefruity, um, but it's definitely something citricky. Citrusy or citricky? I don't know. Is it citricky or citrusy? But it's something kind of like that. It's got a snappy flavor to it. It's not. It's overall, it's getting better, but it's not. It's not great. All right. Barrow's calling for it. Greg Z's getting antsy. All right, I'm getting excited. Let's get into this day in history. This day in history is a nice little fun segment where I bring you factual information that happened on this day, July 5th. Okay. And well. 
I'm not going down as easy as usual. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not a professor. I'm not a history buff. I'm just a dude that finds some cool stuff that happened on this day. And I talk about it to you like we were at the bar together. And I said, hey, you know what? And you know, you always have that one friend or that person that you know. Or maybe it's me that knows the most about nothing. Or maybe this is about something. Because it definitely happened. A rock in my pocket. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. Uh, all right. So, here we go. This day in history, July 5th, 1643, the first ever tornado was recorded in the United States in Essex County, Massachusetts. <laughs> so imagine that, 1643, all these pilgrims and whatever, they're hanging out in Essex, Massachusetts, maybe fielding some corn, and then, holy shit! Or whatever they said back in them days. I probably holy moly. It's probably where it came from. Holy moly. You see this like swirling wind tunnel and it's coming after you and your crops. And all of a sudden all these cows and shit getting picked up and flown out. Flung over there. It's flying over there. Man. Whew. I mean at least now we have meteorologists that go ahead and warn us of tornadoes. But back in 1643 on this day in history July 5th the first tornado was recorded in Essex, Massachusetts. Now on this day in history on July 5th 1841 Thomas Cook opens the very first travel agency called Cook's and go ahead me being travel man Dan I usually use travel agencies but it's definitely travel related so I hope Hope you enjoyed that fun day in history back in 1841. On this day in history, ooh, baby, this is one I like, and this is the one I'm sure you guys are all gonna like. You're an actor without girlfriends. <laughs> I'm thinking magic, seeing a tornado back. I know exactly. All right, and I had a rock in my pocket since my mom said it was fine. All right, Greg Z. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Yeah, exactly. They probably did think it was magic. And then borrow to your um, point, I have no idea. Yes, I am an actor and I have no girlfriend. Very strange. Out of the same company that recently went bankrupt? I don't know, Carlos. They could be. They very well could be. They've been around for a long time. I know that. But hey, on this day in history, and unveils a daring two-piece swimsuit called the bikini. Yes! She wore an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yo oh get on a bikini. Is that how it goes? I don't know. I'm terrible with music songs, lyrics, all that kind of stuff. But hey, that's what happened in 1946. A French designer introduced the world to the biggest it's it's fascinating to see these old videos. On this day in history, July 5th. 1989, Seinfeld, originally titled The Seinfeld Chronicles, screened its very first episode, starring Jerry Seinfeld, Jason Alexander, Love Bikinis, <laughs> and uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Did I say that right? Julia Louis Dreyfus. Julius, and Michael Richards. And, and Michael Richards' character was uh, pretty interesting. He uh, he was the, the Kramer guy, and I think probably the most popular, but you know that little thing where he swings open the door and <laughs> he shucks around like that? That guy, if you've never seen the movie UHF with Weird Al Yankovic, um, uh, uh, Michael Richards was Kramer on that. He, he wasn't called Kramer, he was the janitor. And he was like this dopey, and he would do that like, uh, like, like the, the main boss slams him inside the janitor closet and he like does the same stuff he doing. So it's very interesting to watch UHF. And then a few years later, he was able to develop, to develop that character as Kramer. Yeah, um, but on this day in history, 1989, Seinfeld aired. On this day in history, in 1994, Jeff Bezos. See, like Amazon whole, but you know, back uh, back when I was growing up, yeah. I tell you, these kids today, they just go out there and they, they use that thing on the internet. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, Jeff Bezos created Amazon and life. I just, I'm just a crazy guy. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, on this day in history, um, July 5th, 2002, the great Ted Williams died and passed away. And um, if you don't know Ted Williams, <clears throat> he was one of the greatest baseball players ever. Uh, we always try to do this day in history and throw in a little baseball. He was the last man to bat over 400. He was a Boston Red Sox. Um, 
He was from, he played for the Boston Red Sox. Just a really class act. I want to say that he even was in one of the wars, and some of his baseball years were uh, taken away because he went over and he fought in war. Um, but I, you know, I got to do my full research on him again. Uh, no more family members involved. No, I know, Barrow, Barrow. It's uh, you know, but that's okay because you know it's crazy. Is we have a lot of people. Um, that's awesome. That's pretty cool, Greg. We still have a lot of people here. I know my dad was out grilling. He was doing something. My brother's probably camping. My uncle, who knows? But hey, that's okay. Shouts out to my family. Um, and we still got, like, how many people we got here? We already got 12. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. We are drinking. If you're just hopping in, we're going to start wrapping this up. We're drinking the Ballast Point Lager. It's getting better. It's getting better. You know, it's got a bit of a lemony, crisp freshness to it. It's got um, more of a zip to it. It's not as smooth and creamy as our last beer. Overall, it's all right. You can see how light it is. I mean, look at that. In the light, you can see, it, it looks like I'm holding a, a cup of water, really. Um, but yeah, we just did this day in history. Make sure that you go ahead when, <laughs> yeah, it's here. I know, it's crazy. Make sure you go and let me know. Your what would you rather after this show is over? My mom knew all those guys from the 50s and 60s. That's cool, man. Greg, I have a feeling that you're somehow connected to the movie industry, but that's really cool. But hey, now let's go ahead and I want to talk to you guys. And we're going to do the segment called What Are You Reading? What Are You Watching? And well, I'm going to be real honest with you. This one's going to be hard. It's going to be, you do not look like a lower score. So what are you reading? What are you watching? I always enjoy reading books, plays, and movie scripts. I always continue my imagination. It's more than just scrolling through on Facebook and Instagram and reading one-liners. You actually, is, and when you read, I really think that helps me personally as a professional actor. Um, but it also it makes it makes my life fun, right? I enjoy reading, right? Um, but here's what we're doing. We are all your YouTube family. Oh, borrow. Big hug, buddy. Big hug. Who do we got here? This guy, great personality. Thank you. I don't know you. Thank you so much. All right, so this is what we're reading, okay? Reading is fun. Reading is cool, right? And this is not reading Pandan. This is just what I'm reading. But this one is going to be one hell of a bitch. It's going to be one hell of a run for me. I wanted to really challenge myself, okay? I said that I was coming out, and I challenged you guys to come out of quarantine physically, spiritually, and mentally stronger and better. And this is the mental aspect of it. That's why I went with this behemoth classic of a book. And I've read a lot of British classics. I've read a lot of American classics. But now I'm hopping over to Spanish classics. And that's why I'm going to tackle Don Quixote. Got to shoot out for the Will Ferrell Eurovision. I got four days. I know, dude. I saw that. But this is what I'm reading. This is what I'm reading. Don Quixote. 900 beautiful pages of Spanish. And my mom was like, what? Well, you know, I never knew. Oh, look at this. Greg, I'll get back to that. Very hard, okay? Small reading. All right, this book is not going to be easy. But I wanted to go ahead and read the Spanish Shakespeare. Um, this Miguel de Cervantes is really, he is, if you look at his body of work, I mean, the guy wrote amazing stories. And he's had such a crazy life right? he was you know i don't know if you guys know he was actually captured by pirates in algiers no not in spanish it's in english uh, but still hard right uh, and she gave it away to the kids back in the ah that sucks but uh, he was a slave in algiers for five years and he was able to finally get bought out by his family and then return back to spain why well, quit that i know exactly but but you know that's the thing i'm talking about bubba it's like you need to challenge yourself physically. I exercise pretty much every day. Every day I lift weights. Um, <clears throat> spiritually, well, uh, Max, by the way, I'm from Sweden. I just changed my nickname. Oh, dude. Yes, Max. You are you are the guy that took care of me in uh, uh, sweet, uh, Max Burger, right? What's up, dude? All right, so book or door stopper. No, it's a book. But, but what I'm saying is, 
it's a hell of a task, right? But that's your mental focus. That's your capacity, right? I, you know, movies aren't really casting right now. The movie business is pretty much shut down. But you can still work on your craft. And I think that, you know, reading and going ahead and, and broadening your imagination and really getting out there and reading classics and understanding literature and understanding written through periods of history will really help you not on a personal and mental level, especially 900 friggin' pages of it, but for me as a professional actor, you know, it, it definitely broadens who I am introspectively as an actor. So I'm literally looking forward to it. I'm giving myself two months. So I'm giving myself all of July and all of August. Should have it done. 900 pages. Can I do it? I'll check back in with me. Um, now, I will still do what are you reading, what are you watching, and in the reading part, I'll talk about smaller things. I'll probably... Hey, buddy, at the beginning, we were only three people watching. Right? I know, dude. Greg. I, I, you know, makes me so happy. I can't tell you enough because it's about the work, about work, and only about the work. And, you know, I love doing this. I love that you guys are here. And that's what Greg was saying. It was the very beginning. There was like, uh, there was three people. And, uh, you know, just going to continue doing it. And hopefully, those of you that are with me now, Maybe one day we can get to 100. Uh, what's your best movie or TV series or acting in? My favorite one, Max, I don't understand what you mean by that. Uh, oh, sorry. Max, I got you mixed up. Max Pax, you were not the Max I was thinking of. I started watching that four and five people. I know. Um, my favorite movie was probably the most popular movie that I was in because it was a dream of mine that I set forth to move to China to try to work with Jackie Chan. And I was... Uh, I. I, I did it, man. I, I landed a movie with Jackie Chan and John Cusack and Adrian Brody. I play a general of Jackie Chan. Um, I started watching when it was only me and one other guy in the chat. Dude, I love you guys, man. It makes me so happy. So that was my favorite movie that I've ever acted in because I sent off. My friends thought I was crazy. I would tell them I'm going to go to China. I'm going to work with Jackie Chan. They all thought I was nuts. I moved to China. I got into movies over there. I work, um, do a shot, Uncle John. <laughs> Not today. I got, to, yeah, yeah. So if you haven't seen the movie Dragon Blade, uh, check it out. Dragon Blade. Uh, let me see if I got something on my phone. I usually, uh, listen, I'm not very narcissistic. I hope I'm not. Um, but I do carry stuff for acting on my phone because um, sometimes for acting and stuff like that, I'll have to go ahead and show people um, you know, just acting photos or whatever, you know, in the business and stuff. So my dream and my favorite actor was Jackie Chan. There's nothing wrong with being proud. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Well, yes, it's called Dragon Blade. You can see, I'll, I'll put it up here right here. You can see there is, there is me. <laughs> there is Jackie Chan right there. All right, it's, a, it's like a Roman, you know, here we are again. We're fighting in the battle scene. Okay, there I am right there. And there is Jackie Chan right here. Okay, my character was named Decimus, and I play actually John Cusack's uh, uh, general. And then something happens to John, I'm not going to say it, but then I hop over to Jackie's side. And, um, you know, this was a huge dream, much like Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I really want to work with these people as a professional actor. And when I moved to China, I knew it was a long shot, but there was an audition. It was a Jackie Chan movie. I waited in a line of like a thousand people. Um, I auditioned, they called me back, I auditioned again, and they called me back, I booked the role, I was, you know, through this I've also met some very, very close friends of mine, we're still friends, and um, just an overall amazing experience, yeah, it was, it was really cool, man, and, and you know, <laughs> the funny thing is, is the director that we did that movie, is a really big director, um, it's Chinese and English, Ugh, this really pissed me off, but what are you going to do, hey, hey uh, because it's different over there. So I'm doing this huge monologue. It's Jackie Chan. He's two feet from, five feet from me. And uh, he, he did all the Jet Li movies. Um, and then he did another movie where he called me back. And I, was, I played this movie called Time Raiders. It's like, um, it's like the Chinese Harry Potter. And I'm one of the mercenaries. I actually saved the world in that movie. Yeah, fuck yeah, Travel Man Dan. Oops, sorry. <laughs> you have to check that out. But, but I'm doing this... Uh, uh, monologue with John Cusack five feet from me and Jackie Chan I'm like all beat up and I'm like the blood's coming down me I'm like on the fourth day I could see the sun over the sky and I was like a scout you know I was scouting the armies and whatever and I come back to report to him 
I was so excited. I finally, you know, here I am working with my childhood dream. This was my absolute dream, work with Jackie Chan. Unbelievable. Um, can you get these six million hair down to my knees? Whoa. <laughs> but um, here I go, and um, I go to the premiere. They call me. I'm in the Philippines on the beach, dude. I got like a pina colada. I got a girl with me. We're hanging. We're just freaking getting drunk, you know, hanging on the beach. And they call me like, hey, Da Sing Sing. That's my Chinese name. Uh, go on, go on, go on, Beijing, uh, and I'm like, oh, the, the premiere. So I got to fly back, I fly back because I wanted to see this epic monologue of me and my childhood dream that I actually focused on the dream, put everything I had into it, and I did it. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting at the premiere to watch this while, you know, we're all suited up, and they freaking cut me out, man. I'm so pissed. Uh, but, um, uh, no, no, actually, all that money's gone. <laughs> you know, California, Los Angeles. You know, I'm just smart in terms of, like, I don't live beyond my means when it comes to traveling and, and at, you know, just my regular lifestyle. I want to do something here. I want to create my own travel show and get bigger and blow up and do all that good stuff. But right now, I have to understand that, like, I don't, I'm not rich, so don't live without your means. Be who you are exactly. And through that, you know, I'll continue to get better and hopefully there'll be more money. And I just realized how sweaty my shirt is, so please excuse me. It's very hot here in the studio. But no, I, did, I, I, I do have some money from movies, but I use it sparingly. You know what I mean? Like, I always try to invest. Whatever I book a TV show or a movie role or, uh, you know, something in the film business as an actor, I invest it right back into, well, now my channel. You know, real bottles behind. <laughs> this is the bar, baby. This is the bar. I'm not allowed to touch it, though. I'm not allowed to touch it. Hey, let's go ahead. We didn't do what are you uh, what are you watching. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a score. It's not a it's not a green screen. I'll say that. What am I watching on Netflix now? If you guys grew up in the '80s, Greg, I know you probably know. Uh, Tenacious Freak, you might know. Uh, Carlos, you might remember. Remember Unsolved Mysteries? <whistles> wow, Robert Stack. Oh, you you know, Max. Okay, so you know about Unsolved Mysteries. Well, Netflix has brought it back, and it's incredible. It's just so well designed and shot. And um, your heart breaks for each episode. These poor people that have their family just disappeared and unsolved. So that's what I'm watching. If you get a chance, I think there's five or six episodes. I'm like three or four into it. Really cool. Unsolved Mysteries was amazing. If you get a chance to check it out, be sure to check it out. That's what I'm reading. That's what I'm watching. You started with 60 minutes. I know, I know. It used to close my heart and my teens. But the X-Files. Dude, I know. It's crazy. So we keep going longer and longer. And you guys that know me or you know watch me and stuff, if I got stuff to say, I'm going to continue talking. Oh, there's a good book on mysteries called Missing 411. Dude, I'm writing that sucker down right now. Missing 411. Yes, it was nice back in the mid '80s. Oh, I loved it. I'm, I'm gonna write. Shoot, shoot me a comment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and check that out because I like those unsolved mystery books. Um, it's kind of gross in, in terms of like, you know, we're watching somebody's the lowest point of their life. You should watch. Uh, which channel on Sasquatch? Oh, cool! I gotta see one. Yeah, Aquanuts. You gotta check it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that one on Sasquatch because. I'm so curious about Sasquatch, Bigfoot, all that kinds of stuff. Um, remember the X-Files, the Jersey Devil? <laughs> uh, anyway. All right, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the last sip of this. It was nice because you're doing a good job. Greg, thank you, man. Well, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're, we're definitely growing. We're going uh, longer. and uh, There's more to talk about. And, you know, because you guys are here and you're giving me your time, I think it's only fair and that I, no one has ever, uh, yeah, I know, exactly. Where are all these encounters with them? It's only fair that I, if you guys say something to me that I, I answer back. And so that's where quarantine, guess who? I'm still going to be here. The minute I start traveling, I'm still going to make Sundays the time that I'm here. And we're still going to do this. So, um, yeah, I appreciate it. And, and because I'm going longer, that's because of you guys. Let's go ahead and take one last sip of the lager of, of Ballast Point. And, uh, 
Full name of the missing four one in Western United States, Canada. I'll explain this appearance in North America as I've met. Okay, I'll, David Pilates. Okay, I'll check that out. I'll check that out because, um, yeah, I, I like to see that stuff. So here we go. Let's go ahead and slam the sucker down. It's actually really nice when you take a bigger gulp. Well, it is hot in here. It is hot in here. And, um, well, the first couple of sips that I took... Well, they didn't really taste quite like lager. They tasted like a, almost like a weird citrix kind of snap bite. It got a little bit better. Wasn't the best of beer. Every beer, maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe because I'm conditioned to a real heavy hop beer. But the body on this one was really kind of, um, well, it was uh, very uh, crispy. Uh, very uh, kind of like a sour bite to it. It's nice you answer back everyone. Uh, thank you, Greg uh, Yeah, I mean, it's only it's only fair, right? You guys spend time with me that I answer your question back because um, That's the biggest appreciation I could do and let me tell you you got that's when you uh, Thank you, Greg. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm working now. You're definitely all gonna get something I'm figuring Figuring out how to send it to Europe, but uh, for those of you guys in, in India and stuff like that, but we're gonna do probably shirts first, maybe some type of patch. I don't know. We'll figure something out. But uh, but I got something for you guys. Uh, but it is right here. It says bright, refreshing, and fit for adventure. Maybe that's where they're gonna market it. It's 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 bright. It's definitely light. It's crispy. It's uh, refreshing. Not not awful, but not a great beer. And that's why I'm gonna give it a modest. 5.5 i didn't want to give it a five because well then you could either go either way on it but i did actually quite enjoy it that last couple of sips so i gave it a 5.5 not one of my favorite beers but we got a 5.5 for this one we got a 9.5 for the budweiser lager means low in swedish and it is also means warehouse that's awesome so if you get a chance check out these two beers this I definitely recommend. Freaking amazing. This one, well, try it if you're curious. Maybe you'll get a better, better score. And if you decide what your score is, we always do it on a 0.5 scale. So if you want to drop it in the comments later, if you try the beer, let me know. Love to hear from you. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out the show with a quote. And this quote is a famous emperor in Rome. His name was Marcus Aurelius. You may remember him from uh, The Gladiator. That was a fictional character. And it's funny that I told my little Jackie Chan uh, swords and sandals story because, you know, people that are close to me know that story, but uh, I'm very proud of that. And, and Oh, wait. Marcus Aurelius. And he said, The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. All right, think about this. This is a Roman emperor, a Roman emperor, a general who, who slayed people with swords and crazy wars and things like this thousands of years ago. And he said, the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Well, if your thoughts were of killing people and maiming them with swords, how good could your life be? So he must have been able to compartmentalize his job as a soldier and as a leader and whatever. And you're probably going to have a lifestyle where you're and out, maybe a little depressed all the time, you're not understanding what's going on, because you know, your life is your life, okay, and I don't know how to say that in a, in a more poetic way, but I will tell you, the happiness of life that you live depends on how you think of it, okay, and what thoughts you have, and well, think positive, and be optimistic, yes, there's always going to be stuff out there, and my country is burning right now, okay, people are really, really at each other's throats, necks, um, you know, it's just, yes, absolutely, Max, that, that's, it's a hard thing to do, but, like, fill your mind with positive and optimistic thoughts, and your happiness will begin to bloom, and, and this is not, like, some mystical, you know, like, weird, uh, oh, I'm, I'm with, I'm peaceful, and, you know, all this kind of crazy hippie talk shit, okay? This is a real thing, okay? Start to believe in yourself. Start to feed your mind with positive thought. Start to reinforce every life decision that you make, that it's an optimistic one, that you did the right thing. And you know what? The quality of your thoughts, okay? Don't think so negative. It's a very simple term, right? But if you start to think in a positive manner and you don't think negatively, 
your life is going to get better because of just the way that you're directing it, the way that you're focusing your energy, the way that you're assuming that, look, this is, I'm alive now, okay? I can't go back and do this, okay? I can't, once I'm gone, I'm gone. So I'm here now. Let's think positive. Let's get the things done that I want to do. Let's be kind to each other. Let's go ahead and create this quality of life that everyone's talking about. You ever, you ever see? People that are happy all the time, optimistic and stuff. People get mad at that. They get insanely upset and they think it's fake and they call it bullshit and they call it all these other things. Well, you know what? Maybe maybe it's you. Maybe it's something that inside you that you're not thinking positive and you're not thinking optimistic. So I challenge you, start to think positive, start to think optimistic, start to think better things and the quality of your life will start to change. Wherever that is, it's all relative. Whether you're on the highest mountain and you're the biggest superstar in the world or where you're in the lowest level of a patty rice farming thing in the middle of a Timbuktu, right? Start to think positive. It's all relative. You can live a good quality life. Be healthy. Stink hot and healthy. Because that negative shit will do you no good. God. I hope you all enjoyed me rambling on. I hope you enjoyed that quote of the week. I hope you enjoyed the whole show. I can't thank you enough. We go longer and longer each episode, and that is such a blessing. It makes it. Thank you, thank you so much, Bubba. It makes my week so happy. Uh, positive mind can yes, it can cure anything. And here's the thing: maybe you don't have anything going on, so that positivity will just kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger and um thank you tenacious free and your your quality of life is up here now people automatically assume that quality of life is like oh i gotta have louis vuitton and gucci and vroom vroom the most it's all bullshit quality of life is here in your heart and how you treat people and the things you always want material things well, I have to last. wow oh max pax thank you for sharing that with us and uh you know, whatever you're going through, brother, you know, I, yeah, that, um, thank you, Aquanuts. You had your, your, your left leg amputated, okay? And here you got people like myself and other people, and, and we have our legs fully functioning. I was able to run today. Uh, it was my own choice and way better with the prosthetic. Dude, that's, that's powerful, man. At the end of the show, that's powerful. Have a great week, Bubba. That is really powerful, Max Pax. Thank you for sharing. And that's the perfect example of that quote. The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. Uh, thank you, Baro. You are a genius, my man. I appreciate you. You guys have a great one. Max Pax, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. Try those beers if you can. Pop on a video. Say what's up from time to time. Let me know about the what would you rather. I want to know if you're a booger eater or if you like the wax. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I'm Travel Man Dan. Remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.